くとあの円盤に行くことがあったりとか、まあ、できます On June 12, 1975, the Pleiadians directed Edward Meyer to the location where he would succeed in taking this remarkable 8mm movie footage. By comparing the size of known objects to that of the UFO, the approximate diameter appears to be 7 meters. Here the beam ship can be seen to float up and down in a gentle manner. But as we continue watching, we will soon realize that this film contains a rare sequence, the moment when the UFO disappears suddenly. Meyer says that the beam ship can travel through multiple dimensions. We assume that this is that moment of transformation. In this segment, not only does the craft disappear possibly to another dimension, but it also returns. Next, the film is checked to determine if some type of trick has been used, beginning the examination where the object disappears and reappears. Now, examine the film frame by frame. It is discovered that the actual disappearance occurs in only one frame, in less than one twentieth of a second. After extensive analysis was completed on this segment of the film, it became clear that there was no trickery involved. Now, examine the exact moment that the UFO reappears. This time as well, there is no detection of trickery. Surprisingly, when the craft appears, the frame becomes very bright. This means that there is some type of energy affecting the film itself. It occurs within one twentieth of a second, the exact time required for the ship to reappear. In June of 1975, Mr. Meyer set his 8mm movie camera on automatic, so both he and the beam ship could be captured in the same scene. Meyer explained that this is the location where he sat to wait for the craft to appear. Meyer took great pains to create this scene as he wanted to establish proof that he was indeed having contact with the Pleiadians. His method? Arranged to film he and the beam ship simultaneously. And then the second time I was sitting here. During the first few moments of this segment, the craft is not visible because the NTV video camera that filmed off of Meyer's original 8mm footage has a smaller viewfinder. The zoom work is being done by the Japanese video crew. The small camera is set on automatic and secured to the tripod. The beam ship can clearly be seen floating silently and gracefully while posing overhead. Meyer says a strange calm prevails just prior to the appearance of the craft. Even the birds in the area stop their singing and movements, becoming very still and quiet. Perhaps it is because birds and animals have the ability to hear 
or have the sensitivity to detect the unseen energy or frequencies of the UFO. Meyer shows Yaoi the location where the beam ship first appeared and explain that it moved from left to right, right to left, and then back again left to right. The beam ship can be seen hovering above the mountain at Hasenbo. Then suddenly the ship begins to move. Closely studying the movement of the craft, it seems possible that the object is suspended on a string, perhaps connected to a long pole. But carefully watch the branches of the tree, which is to the right of the screen. It is obvious that the wind is blowing fiercely. But the beam ship remains perfectly still. This observation leads us to believe that the ship is not a small model suspended by a string. If the ship were suspended by a string attached to a pole, a different form of movement would be seen. The beam ship can be seen to stop in midair, without any form of hesitation and no wind-related movements. If the object were a model suspended in some manner, it would react much differently in a strong, gusty wind. This ship stops and does not waver. When the beam ship begins to move, it sails smoothly without any hesitation. This indicates that there is no physical obstruction of any kind. During a replay of the footage, a forward and backward movement will be observed as the craft stops, if it was suspended by something. For convenience sake, lines will be drawn where the ship stops and where it begins moving, affording the observation of any unusual wobbling or swaying. It is obvious that the beam ship stops abruptly. Zooming in on the beam ship, one can see a light, possibly some type of energy, as it begins to move. The understanding of what this is, or could be, is limited. Only theories exist. From the analysis of this footage, we know that there is a gusty wind, yet in contrast, the beam ship remains stable. At this time, Meyer was using the zoom lens on the 8mm camera. A difficult feat for a man with one arm and the reason for the lack of centering in the viewfinder. At times, the spacecraft emits a burst of light from the top of the cupulo and the flange or rim of the circular object. While filming this segment, Maya recorded the sounds of the beam ship, as indicated by the Japanese subtitles. Watching the footage and listening to the recorded sounds, one can readily determine that when the craft moves closer to the recorder, the strength of the noise increases, thus indicating the strong vibrational frequencies emitted by the ship.